player in women's basketball. She's one of the best, if not the best. Uh, I don't want to take anything away from the young lady up at Connecticut in sales, but right now for the overall game, I think Hostal might be the best in the country. She's got a pretty good supporting cast, and they're all freshmen. Uh, unbelievable. Their freshman is, is in enrollment in Tennessee, but because they've played so much AAU ball, they've been exposed to so much international basketball. These players are like sophomores in experience. There's another freshman we need to talk about. She's going to wear black and gold today. Ashley Smith is going to be their point guard. Five for the freshman uh, out of... Uh a, a pretty good high school program, but she comes in here today. She's She probably has never seen the press like she's going to see yeah. today. This is her biggest challenge of her collegiate high school career ever because she has to be able to handle the fans, the excitement of the game, but more importantly, those Tennessee hands and arms and everything coming in and being physical with her and handling the basketball. This crowd will stand until Tennessee scores its first basket. We're set to go. Hellman and Holzclaw jump it, and Tennessee gets it first with Kyra Elsie. The crowd's so loud I had to cut my volume down. I came here. Holzclaw misses and Smith comes up with a rebound. So Vanderbilt stops Tennessee on the first attempt and the Commodores bring it up. Andy's going to try to make Holzclaw shoot from outside. Jeter got a hand on it. Janky down low. Ostrom lays it up. No good and a foul is called. Vanderbilt and high low. Yes, and I think one of the keys to the game, if you're going to beat Tennessee, I think one of the things you must do is remove one of their players from the game. One of their key players must get in foul trouble and remove them from the game or make their effectiveness not near as much as it should be to call the foul trouble. Jackson's gets the foul and Ostrom at the line. That puts Vanderbilt in front, 1-0. That's a good start for Vandy. Vandy must have a great start to have a, a shot at winning this basketball game because of the crowd and all of the atmosphere surrounding this basketball game. Ostrom, 2-for-2 two two at the line, and Vanderbilt leads it by a score of 2-0. Vandy won't press. Now, what kind of defense? How will they attack Tennessee? They will be in a 2-3 matchup zone for the whole game, making Tennessee shoot the basketball from outside. Elsie, not much of a shooter out there, tries to penetrate, does, and misses it. Smith runs down under the rebound. Uh, Vandy must rebound the basketball on the defensive end. They cannot give Tennessee two and three opportunities uh, to shoot the basketball. That's what Tennessee's very good about. They shoot the basketball, but they go get it also. They send three people to the board, and they're very good at that. I think one of the best teams in the country, if not the best. I asked uh, Jim Foss today, the coach of Vanderbilt, if he's concerned about Ashley Smith bringing it up against the press. He said, no, why should I? She's a good player. He believes in her. He, he, this is the point guard that Jim's been looking for, and I think she can do the job. Hellman against Cheater. Pulls up and took a travel. Hit the basket, doesn't count. Pressure defense once again by the Lady Ball called uh, Hillman to walk with a basketball, and that's what they do best. They're forcing about 25, 26 turnovers a game. And when you give that, a good team that many opportunities, that makes them tough. Vanderbilt is turning it over 18 times per contest. But again, as Van just said, Tennessee is forcing 27 turnovers, plus they're stealing it 15 times a game. Pulse Claw ties it. Tennessee would work the ball inside, irregardless if Vandy's in a zone, and, and there's nothing Vandy can do about it because they're so good at that. Janky comes back to break the press, and Vanderbilt turns it over. Bad pass, Ostrom looks like it slipped out of her hands. 2-2 game. Tennessee against Vanderbilt. It's the 31st meeting between these long-time rivals. Vanderbilt's only won four of them. Janky gets the foul on the foot. Man our zone. Tennessee will penetrate to the basket. If you cut them off, they were going to dish off to somebody on the weak side, and that person will shoot a three. Vandy will naturally zone out of bounds. Jolly brings it in. Catching. Shots in the air. Won't count. An illegal pick is going to be set on Teresa Jeter. Jeter, a surprise starter today. Yes. The freshman from Columbia, South Carolina, makes her second career start. That's what separates, in my opinion, Pat Summit from most coaches in this country. Nobody else would start a freshman after winning 20 games, number one in the country. They would not want to mess with that lineup. She will change lineups at any time, anywhere. Final four doesn't make any difference. Backdoor look, Jamie. Nice play. Layup by Respondent. If you're going to counter the Tennessee pressure, you must back cut and back, uh, back door the basketball. Vanderbilt leads it 4 2. Holstclaw to Elsie. Elsie to nobody. Thought Holstclaw was breaking back and it sails out of bounds. I, I think against this zone, I think we'll see a substitution by Tennessee today. I think that they will counter 
this matchup zone uh, with uh, Randall in the game pretty early. Maybe uh, another freshman or two in. Hillman in backcourt. Tries to bring it up and does so. And frontcourt responding. Ostrom, nice move against catching as she scores. When a team presses you, Bob, you not only beat the press, you must make them pay a price by scoring. That makes them not want to press. And Vanderbilt traditionally, man, has been a very good passing team, and he has yes, to do that yes, against the press. Yes. Catching, taking it against Respondic. Good. Six to four. The, the pace suits Vanderbilt right now at this time. Jim Foster is very pleased with how it's going. Respondic breaks the press and brings it to front court. Ostrom thought about the three. Holstein gets a vicious pick by Hillman. Ball out of bounds. It will still be Tennessee's, or it should be Vanderbilt basketball. Well, I tell you what, Holstein got clocked on that yeah. one. That was a tough pick, I, I will say that. But right now, Bandy is beating the press and not turning the basketball over. And that's what you have to do to beat Tennessee. Hellman comes out to get it with Jeter right with her. Bandy is bringing their big players out against high court pressure to counter Tennessee's pressure. They're letting a point guard throw the ball in bounds to a big player break into the ball. It's hard for a big player to defend that. That player, Hillman, is throwing the ball right back to Smith. That's how that they're counting the Tennessee pressure at half court. Smith trying to get it in, does, finds Respondic. Pulls up and fires. Good. Respondic with her second basket, and Vandy leads it 8-4. Now is their foul away from the ball. Seven match going on. Uh, Hillman uh, contesting uh, Hostball running across the lane, checking her with a body. I thought this was a sub that Pat would make early, bringing in the freshman uh, to be able to shoot the basketball and, and, and also put pressure on. Clement, Ace Clement comes into the game, and she'll take the ball inbounds. She got the name Ace from just feeling it pull from outside. She's a Philadelphia girl. Kristen Clement slowed early in the season with a stress fracture, but she's healthy now and getting a lot of minutes for Tennessee. I think they'll carry the ball away from her in a minute. She'll shoot a three from outside. Why shoot a three when you've got one of the greatest players in the country that can penetrate and shoot? Bandy breaks the press again. Ostrom goes in against Holstwall. Bandy is running four across in the backcourt, but relieving the pressure by breaking long after getting the ball inbound. Tatchings gets it in. Tennessee's an excellent Tatching team, too, man. Uh, their, their inside play is just phenomenal. Whether against the zone, that's very difficult to do. Here's Hillman. She breaks ahead of the pack and scores. And Pat Summit right away wants to talk about it. You don't see many teams on the floor against Tennessee like this. No. What they're doing, they're lining four up on the baseline, or on the free throw line, passing the ball inside, running one long. But Tennessee and Pat Summit's not going to put up with that very long. So Summit takes the time out to talk about her team to regroup things just a bit. But I've also thought this, if you're Vandy, if you're going to play Tennessee, you just cannot beat their press. You've got to make them pay a price. You've got to score. You've got to put the ball in the basket. So Jim Foster's team off to a good start. Many teams have fallen way behind early, and that's a tough spot, but they play with all yeah. that composure. Yeah, to have 12 points at the 15-minute mark, so to speak, is an absolute plus for their confidence. So make Randall's into the game. Number 21, another one of the freshmen. Tennessee's the only team I know of that substitutes and gets better. Tennessee turns it over, and Vanderbilt's got it. Smith gives it to Respondic, thinks better of it. Vanderbilt's in its first five shots from the field. James is being able to tough pass. Randall racing the other way. Tennessee team can run. Uh, uh, the steal in by Jeter at that time. And, uh, Pat, she gives the ball up immediately. So many people steal the ball and want to dribble it. And then Randall get, takes the ball for the hole strong, does not pass the ball at that time that she shouldn't have. If you, if you pass the ball in that situation, you get the chance on turning the ball over. Randall hits the free toss. She gets the three-point play. 
And Alishonda Stevens coming into the game, replacing Teresa Jeter. Now an immediate timeout is going to be asked for. Vanderbilt off to a good start. Tennessee has cut it to one with 15-17 to go in the first. Vanderbilt leading Tennessee 12 to 11 here in Knoxville. Bob Chesling and Van Chancellor, the Commodores holding their head above water right now, Van. But here's your problem. You're Jim Foster from Vanderbilt now, and you think to yourself, I, my team's playing really good, and I'm on the upper point. That does worry you. Uh, you'd like to be up seven or eight playing as well as they're playing. Vanderbilt hadn't missed a shot yet. Still, they lead by just one point. Full court press by Tennessee. Nobody's open. Finally responding, or Ostrom comes back to get it, and Vanderbilt breaks the pressure. This is a very well-coached Vanderbilt basketball team. They are playing. A, they have a great game plan at this point in time. Foster's got them in uh, to where they're not throwing the ball away. Oh, Ace Clement gets hammered from behind by Ostrom. That will go to the line. That's going to be an intentional foul on Lisa Ostrom. You say that, and then Clements comes in and Steals the basketball, and we got an intentional foul. Uh, I think when a player today breaks to the basket, Bob, and gets a layup, let them go. You don't accomplish anything by, make, uh, by doing that. You just put the official in a position where they may call this. Clement well, banks it in. She's beat up. She, did she call that bank? Did she say, may I? The adrenaline's going a little hot. And she missed that one a little strong. Ties the game at 12. Second time we've been tied, but I was tied also at two. We're talking about Vanderbilt shooting well. Tennessee's five of seven. I said, do not change that remote. Do not look at another game. We've got a great game right here. Not enough. These two in-state rivals. Catching's open for three. A little strong there. Ostrom rebounds. Outlet pass. Respondent. Respondent. Stop and go. Reverse layup at the bottom of the bucket. And Alec Fallon responding, trying to go get it. I thought for the first time, Andy came down and, and did not do what Coach Foster wanted them to do. That was to take a, an alley-oop pass over, drive to the basket, and try to make a play. I'm sure he would like for his team to have brought the ball back out and set up and run some clock. Fanny makes some changes. Paige Redmond comes in and also into the game. Jennifer Holmes. It's a tie game with 14 and a half to go in the first. Fanny stays in that zone. They're going to make Tennessee shoot the ball from outside or penetrate to the basket. Good luck, Clement. The catch it. Tennessee passes the ball to their interior players as well as I've seen any team pass the ball inside since I've watched them play in the last 20 years. One thing about it, they've also played a lot together in the summer, so it's not like they just showed up yes. on campus and had to introduce themselves to each other. They played on several USA teams and AAU teams down through the years. Tennessee leads for the first time in the game. Smith lost it, but she was fouled by Randall. When you have talent, you don't, you're not worried about how well they play together. Great players will play together in a hurry. Uh, it, it's when you've got average players, it takes a while for them to learn. Great players are going to make plays every time. Yeshima Hellman comes back in. Katie Janke leaves the contest. And Tennessee is, plays at such a frantic pace. Yes. It wears other teams down. So yeah. depth is a concern today for Vanderbilt. A big concern. That's the way the, the Lady Vols play. You must stay fresh. You must substitute. Pass and low. Holmes puts it up. Bounces off. That's the first miss. And Clement rebounds. Pass. Oh, great. Looks like Clement the whole cross. She missed the bucket. But what a terrific look-away pass by Ace Clement. Ace rebounds the basketball. Comes down the left side of the floor. Dribbling, looking around. And all of a sudden, gets Hoslop under the basket through three handy defenders. What a play. Great look. She's got great vision. And Holstclaw steps to the line. There are a lot of players that can finish that play. You put a lot of players in that position, they can make that play. Not many players can make that pass. Give me players who can make plays. Tennessee beat DePaul the other night, 125 to 46. And Holstclaw, you would think she would have had 50 in the game. She only had eight. That shows you where the other ones are. Here's Hillman. You heard it. Taking no prisoners. 
in Michael Jordan's territory. That's right. The foul is going to be on catchings as she runs down Hillman. Tried to block the layup and then bump to the forehead. We mentioned the fact Tennessee did go to DePaul the other night to Chicago. They had a chance to go up as a team in mass to Michael's office on Tuesday afternoon, so that was a thrill. I would think so. They got all kinds of autographs and got a chance to talk with him. Michael was very gracious, and what a thrill it was for the Lady Balls. Shemekwa Holtzclaw, of course, and Jordan got to talk a while, and Shemekwa thought that was terrific. Vanderbilt, that's a turnover. The Tennessee pressure just forces you into mistake after mistake and, and because they're so quick and, and they have great height they're not big inside but they're they're, they're wings are five foot eight five foot nine and, and quick and that's what you like fifth turnover for vanderbilt tennessee leads it by four 13 minutes to go in this first half i think the Andy plan is real good but lately they just had a little trouble executing it Holtzclaw got to shoot over the top, gets it, and she's down. I think that's her part of her game. It's improved more than any other phase since she was a freshman. This is what has made Kamika Holtzclaw a great player. It's a player that can go on the baseline at 15 feet and shoot the basketball and make it. I want to tell you this, Bob. When she first came into the league at Ole Miss, when I was the Ole Miss coach, I kept mispronouncing her name. Great shot on the baseline there. And so I, I kept, so I called a coleslaw. And my manager at that time, Jeannie Vance, came up with Pat's camp, and she told her that story. So last year she lit me up for about 30. So after the game, she said, hey, Coach Townsend, do you know my name now? <laughs> I said, baby, I guarantee you I know your name. You said, yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> so y'all yeah, know her name now. Coleslaw, this is the free throw, but she still has eight early in the game. And Tennessee leads it by six. Vanderbilt's offense has bogged down a little bit. Smith down low to Hillman. Hillman kicks it out. The three in the air and good by Paige Bredman. That was a shot that Vandy needed to have for their confidence, for their continuity. Redmond's their best outside shooter, her 23rd three-pointer of the season. That ended Tennessee's 10-0 run over the last three minutes. There's a steal by Vanderbilt. Redmond comes out of there with it. Tennessee's back defensively. That put it off for the jump shot. No good by Hammond. Ball loose on the floor. Redmond dives after it. Tied up. All in the possession goes to Vanderbilt. 11.58 to go in the first. And Tennessee leads it by three. And right now, an official's timeout is going to be asked for. Matt Summit's team leads it by three. 11.58 to go in front of this big house in Knoxville. Vanderbilt, 18-15. Vanderbilt led early in the contest. At one point, led it 8-4. to four. But then Tennessee roared back to take the lead. The Commodores have cut the lead back down to three again. If I'm Vandy, I'm, I'm happy with this situation. I'd like to be in a little bit better shape, but down three at this point in the game is not bad. And Vanderbilt used a lot of folks to get them into the game early. Tennessee went to a zone out of bounds and trapped every pass. 2-3 zone, trapped every pass. Vandy handles that extremely well and uh, got a foul. LaShonda well, Stevens gets the foul, the sophomore out of Woodstock, Georgia. Didn't start today for the first time this season. As Teresa Jeter got the start. Janky comes back in for Vanderbilt. Summit's theory is she doesn't necessarily uh, concern who's uh, starting the game, who's going to finish it. And, and, and the great thing about their situation, if you don't start, you accept your role and play basketball. Hillman lays it up in a nice look, though, from Hammond. And it's 18 to 17. Now trying to solve this zone. If they have one Achilles, it's been their inability to shoot outside. But Randall takes it inside. But Vandy in their zone must stop penetration because this is how Tennessee's getting all the close-in shots. In a zone, you've got to make them stop and pass and skip a pass and make Tennessee shoot from outside. Vanderbilt's only loss in the conference was at South Carolina, and kind of an upset. Yeah, and that's, yeah, I'm sorry. Excuse yeah. me, no, my fault. Tennessee's going to a matchup zone at this time. Uh, they'll play zone as a change of pace. That's their second over and back call. And 
that's a non-forced turnover. Against Tennessee's pressure, man, you expect your players to turn the ball over. Against the matchup zone that they're playing, Vandy's got to handle the ball well enough not to give up the ball. Sixth turnover in the game now for Vanderbilt. Tennessee has four. We played nine minutes of the first half, and the Lady Ball lead is three. Tennessee's really moving the ball well and, 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 and it's penetrated and pitching the ball inside, which is very, very good against the zone. And Vanderbilt's not giving them second shots. No. That's how Vandy's staying in the game. Tennessee's getting one shot. Usually against most teams, they shoot the ball to I say they get tired. Janky in the lane, turns and missed it. Goes after a rebound. Redman open. Nope. And Clement runs down the rebound. Vandy had a chance to tie it. Clement inside. Stevens. Janky had it and fouled from behind by Teresa Jeter. Janky's another player. She's getting better. She's out of Centerville, Ohio. She's been bothered with some injuries this year. I think the injuries has kept her from becoming one of the upper groups of players in the Southeastern Conference. I think if she could get some playing time and, and get it going for her as far as continuation, I think she could be an outstanding player in this league. Her dad was a great player at the University of Dayton. Uh, Vandy is now facing a, the matchup 1-1-3 zone that Tennessee plays a great deal of. Looking for the outside shot. Hillman had a good look, missed it. Wrestles the rebound away from her buddy, Samika Randall, and then gets fouled. I think Hillman's one of the most athletic players that Mandy's had in the last four or five years. And what she does a great job of. Shoot the basketball, go get it, stick it back up. And the foul is on East Clemen. You know, we talked about Hillman and Randall, their Trinity High School connections out of Cleveland, Ohio. There was also another player in this league from there, Vonda Ward, who played at Tennessee and also went to Trinity. That great high school basketball in this country. Some of it's in Ohio. And, uh, and that's so good because I think that the unsung heroes of today are the our junior high and high school basketball coaches. They are the ones who are influencing these young people, the ones of us that are coaching on the pro level and college level. Uh, we don't have quite as much influence. These high school coaches have a great influence on these kids. Hellman hits one of two. She's got five points on the day, and the Tennessee lead is two, 2018. And I'm not minimizing a college coach's influence upon a kid, but in high school, it's so important. Clement penetrates, gets hammered going in, and will go to the line. She gives, Clement gives Tennessee the different look. Jolly is more of a player that, although she'll penetrate at times, Clement's always looking to penetrate. Yeah, it, it, Jolly is an outside player. She's a player that's looking to pass the ball, stay on the perimeter, and shoot the ball from outside. And, and Clement comes in and drives the ball to the, to the basket. And I think at any position, uh, a contrast in style is very good for your team. It's like pitching. You know, you've got a baseball pitcher, and you come in with a curveball pitcher. Clement, that's her second point of the day. Now two or three at the line. And I like her game. I think I think she has a very nice game. Uh, and is doing some things for them, I think, will add as they make a championship run. Clement, it's the free toss as Kelly Jolly looks on. Now Jolly and Elsie are coming back into the game. Give Vandy credit. Tennessee's dropped out of their press, and I think that's a plus for Vandy. Hillman swings it back out to Smith. Hosting Dork now into the game for Vanderbilt. As again, Jim Foster played a lot of coach pass inside Hillman, and she scores on Stevens. Out of, out of the matchup zone, Tennessee is so athletic. They pressure you in the zone. They pressure you everywhere you go. Hillman off to a good start with seven, and now Stevens can't control the pass, and Vanderbilt's got a chance to tie it up again. Vandy's game plan to counteract what Pat and, and Tennessee's doing is it, uh, very good at this time. Every time the Tennessee team changes, uh, Vandy counters with a challenge. Ray Laxton comes in for Tennessee. Holstclaw also back into the game. Holstclaw with eight points. 9.08 to go. What a game. Yep. Vandy would like to take this thing well into the second half. Yeah, but it's close, wouldn't it? <laughs> if they can't, that's just a plug. They like the way the game's going overall right now. It's a Vandy tempo. Dangerous pass there, but Smith able to get it. You can't throw those half-court passes against Tennessee usually. They're too quick. Shot clock at five. Hammond in the lane. Tough shot. Too strong. Vanderbilt draw on the boards, but this time Ketchings wins the battle. 
to make a catch. Now to Elsie on the right side. Jolly drill for three in the next two minutes. That's my prediction for this. Bernay likes to have the ball go off her hands, but it's saved by Jolly. Shot clock inside 10. Laxton in the lane to the basket. Puts it up. Missed it off the front lip. Battle on the rebound, and Janky gets another one. Boy, I tell you what, Janky's got a lot of rebounds and loose balls. Yeah, I like the way Janky and Hillman are playing right now for Vanderbilt. They are doing a wonderful job of playing tough, fighting the boards. And, uh, I think and Laxton, when she drove in, outstanding play. She just has to finish that job. And you get that opportunity to score in these types of games, you've got to make the plays. Great free throw shooter in Katie Janky. 83% at the line. She's had a very solid year. That was in 10 and a half points a game, and she gets her first point today. Vanderbilt could tie it up with this free throw. Sometimes when you talk about great shooters, you jinx them, but if you can shoot the ball, you can shoot the free throw. That's for the tie. And let me tell you, any big player that can shoot free throws, that's a plus because they get fouled all the time. Holstclaw to the right side. Janky out on the floor guarding Holstclaw. Backdoor look. Catchings gets back. No foul. Another ball not free. Tennessee will scramble back after it. A lot of contact today. But the mark of a great player. Have the ball stolen from you. You thought you got foul. Then you deflect the ball and go get it. It's all right to make a mistake. Just forget it. Go to the next play. There was no reset on the shot clock. And yeah. Holstclaw walks. 7.36 to go in the first half. Vanderbilt in Tennessee playing dead even. 22 all with seven and a half to go. I will be here for Tennessee and Alabama next week. You see the latest collection to the Lady Ball National Championship banner collection above the Raptors here at the arena. That's pretty impressive. Yes, it is very impressive. If you're going to win a national championship in 98, you've got to go through the big orange machine. Of course, Vanderbilt will host one of the regionals this year. And so there's a chance Vandy might be playing on their home floor. They hope to host the middies this year over in Nashville. And Tennessee does not care where they go just as long as they don't go to Nashville. That's right. I know what that feeling is like when you're in college, Tracy. Tennessee is trapped in the ball now, trying to wear down Ashley Smith, and that's going to be one of the concerns Coach Foster has for his team later in the game. I tell you what, I've been impressed how Vanderbilt's handled this pressure. Ostendorf inside, second time no good, third time knocked away. He got two point blank range, looks at it, couldn't finish. Pulse claw. Nice move, gets a foul. What a move. When you go back and grab the ball inside, you can do almost a 360 and drop and almost drop it in. Andy got two good looks at it. Tied up 22-22 with seven minutes to go. Uh, some way you got to knock those down in these types of games. Whole squad of the strike to a three from the free throw line today. That's way short. She was out here this morning. Tennessee didn't have a shoot around. But as soon as Vanderbilt got done, whole squad came out for about 30 minutes along with the uh, catchings. And uh, they just shot. But some people do not realize what great players go through sometimes. I heard that during the summertime that she would work out at 6 o'clock as far as her run and weight lifting. That's dedication. Those are the type of moves that make you a great player. Tennessee's first points in about two and a half minutes. Lady Balls take the lead, 23-22. Lady Balls are in a three-quarters quarter, half court, 2-2-1 two, two, zone press. Most of that time finishes, and Vanderbilt takes the lead back, 24-23. Give Dandy credit for adjusting to every change in defense that Tennessee has thrown at them. Elsie shut off by Janky. Most claw against the zone inside. Catching's lost it, but it bangs off. Vanderbilt out of bounds. Holmes couldn't handle it. Vanderbilt's first lead since 12-11 to go. Mandy is really moving well in their zone, uh, leaving some little gaps for Tennessee to penetrate and kick inside. Kick out to Holstclaw. Reverse the ball to Jolly. Catching the fire and hits. Why reverse the ball to anybody when you got Catching's with eight. 
There's some that say that catching is further along now in her freshman year than Holzpah was when she was in her freshman year. That's awfully scary. Yes. Uh, she can shoot the ball, I think, better than uh, Holzpah could, but I don't know if she can do the other things. Rebound, play the defense. The time will only tell that. Austin Dorff, good luck. Layup short again by Hammond, and Rambo gets it. That was a smart move. Uh, as the ball was going out of bounds, Randall, most players would have tried to grab it and it would have fell out of their hands out of bounds, but she did not. She let it go out of bounds on Bandy. Nice play for a freshman. Okay. Elsie pulls up, missed it, pulls ball, sticks it in. Twenty-seven, twenty-four, Tennessee. And now Vandy wants a 20-second timeout. Holstwaugh in double figures now with 11 points. And Tennessee bounces back after trailing in the game. 24-23. They've scored four straight. Later tonight, Fox Sports News at 10 o'clock Eastern. Everything from the Super Bowl today. The Broncos and the Packers. They're on Super Bowl Sunday. It'll be live from San Diego. Man, who's your pick? Oh, I, I think Green Bay is going to win, but I'm, a, I'm going to pick Denver because I'd like for John Elway to win one. I think he's a great guy, but I can't go against the Mississippi boy down and far from the Green Bay Packers. Brett Farr. Two of the best coaches in the business. Yes. Matt Summit, Jim Foster, yes. Matt Switz today. And in a TV game, the one of the advantages that Jim Foster will have as far as resting his players, he gets a timeout every four to eight minutes, and that's an advantage for him today. Janky kicks it out. Hosted door to tie it. No. Jolly had it, lost it. Good hustle by Hammond. And now a whistle. And a traveling violation on Jennifer Holmes. I'm impressed today with Vanderbilt's offensive rebounding and holding their own against Tennessee on the boards. But I'm also impressed so much with the young players that Tennessee has brought into this program. Uh, they're quality people. You know, we mentioned that a lot of times you have freshmen, Van. You've been around a lot of them. You're hoping they can just find their way from the gym back to their dorm room. Yes, you, 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 <laughs> lots of times they can't even find the distant dressing room here when they come into a place like this. Randall misses. And I, th I think also the Vandy freshman Smith has had a great game, and I'm impressed with her also now. Janky gets her first basket. Uh, her turnovers are, are, are very slim and very few, and, and I'm impressed with that. You know, I think Smith has been a key to the game. Yes, she sir. just hasn't turned the ball over. She's I really handled the Tennessee pressure. I guess exterior pressure. Uh, Vandy's adjusted. They're not coming out on these L right now uh, in that zone. Those, they can stop the penetration. Janky had it, but it banged off her nose and she lost it. Holstraw gets an open look. And she puts the ball on the floor, going left. She's going to shoot a jumper, and you better put her hand in her face at 15 feet. 13 for Holstraw. And she's only missed one shot today. Big time players play big in big games. That's a bad pass by Smith. We're just dragging on him. Clement takes it right to the basket, short arms it, and Randall comes up with a loose ball. I thought she might have fed the ball to Randall then at the end. Holstraw missed that one. Randall comes up with a loose ball and a whistle. And a traveling ball. Clement drove to the basket. Smith came over. I thought she could have dished the ball inside then, but that's a tough choice for a young player. Tennessee, 29-26, getting later in the first half from Knoxville. My game to that next level, and I think, you know, I, I'm kind of the leader by example. The players see me go hard, they want to go hard. If I'm not dogging it, they don't want to be dogging it. Chevy Cajolstraw, she was named by the USA Basketball organization as their player of the year for her play this summer on USA national teams and uh, she was the only collegiate player on, on the team she participated on and uh, she was outstanding and she deserves it she's got the total package and, and, and she's got a wonderful attitude about the game has a great joy kind of a Michael Jordan kind of smile Magic Johnson kind of happiness <laughs> Twice this year, Holstraw has been named the SEC Player of the Week in the conference. 
Vanderbilt down three. And there's the double team. The ball knocked away, but out of bounds. Elsie came up with a quick hand. The way deep Tennessee plays here at home defensively, sometimes as a coach, you look out and say, Ralph, would you please check and see if there's six players on the floor? Backdoor look. Nice play, but it's ooh, short again as Hammond can't finish. And a foul is called. Outstanding play by Coach Foster and the Vanderbilt team. They ran a back screen, threw the ball long, shot a layup, and could not make it. Second foul on Katie Janke. And when you're a coach, when that play happens in a close game like this, little daggers kind of go in your heart when they don't make it. Well, and you look also earlier in the game, they had a couple of uh, shots inside they couldn't finish off. So that's potentially six points Vanderbilt didn't get, and Holstclaw makes him pay with their 14th point. I asked Coach Foster today, did he own a coat and tie, and his wife said he, he owned one when they got married. I was just checking to see. <laughs> Shots no good, but Tennessee scrambles after the rebound. Catchings for three. That's what makes her a great freshman. Key game, just step up and drill a three. Tennessee has opened up biggest lead now, seven points. Catchings with 11, holds Holtzclaw with 14. a little concerned with that foul, but I think in a game of that nature, I, I think it is a foul, and I think that's the call we have to make in women's basketball. We have to have a finesse game that cannot be a knockdown and drag out for the good of the game, and I'm not saying that for either team, Tennessee nor Vandy. That's just my personal opinion about officiating for our game. At the line is Ashley Smith averaging almost eight assists a game, and her turnover ratio has been terrific. Two and a half Assist for every one turnover. That's what you want from a point guard. Outstanding in that area. Very few turnovers and a great many assists. She gets her first two points of the game. And now Tennessee starting point guard is back in the game. Jolly still actually going to off guard now as Kristen Clement stays in the game to play the point. It's a five-point Tennessee lead, 2.50 to go on the first half. Tennessee players are so versatile. They can play so many different positions, and that is a plus for them. Catchings in the lane. Pull-up jumper rolls in. If you're an SEC coach, you're thinking, three more years of this? And they've got... More troops on the way next year. They've added a couple of big post players for next season. Tennessee has. Randall pokes it away, but Smith comes up with it. Now they're going to call her for traveling. Said she pinned the ball on her hip. Uh, Tennessee has a great staff as far as recruiting players. And, and, and Meek and Holly now, they, they do a great job for them. And I, I think Pat Summit's one of the great coaches in this country. Sometimes when you have good talent, people... I think it, it's just talent, but Pat is the one that's brought him here. This is the Pat Summit program here at Tennessee, and uh, she's done such a great job. She's kind of got the rap Pat Riley used to have with the Lakers. I mean, they'd win it every year, and they say, well, he's supposed to win. So, well, uh, wait a minute now. I'm going to go back. I think the toughest job in coaching is to win when you're supposed to win. Point taken. A lot more pressure on you. Yes. Some people don't coach well under that. Tennessee's done a great job when they had the big ones play slow, pounded inside. When they got this team, run and press. Every time I see them play, I say, what did Tennessee change coaches? That's not Pat Summit. Smith, good entry pass and a foul. Story got it inside and draws a foul from Catchings, and that'll be her third foul. Always in the two or three minutes, right before halftime, everybody talks about the start of the game, the start of the second half, but I think it's so vital that Vandy down seven, right here with 141, keep their composure and keep the game at a four, five, or six point mark to go in at halftime so they can feel good about themselves as they come out and start the second half. Story trying to dent the scoring column. She's a freshman out of Madison, Alabama. 60% free throw shooter. High arching shot rattles out. Stevens back in. Catching sits down with the three points, or three fouls. And Andy's had their opportunities in the last two to three minutes. Missed free throws. Missed easy little chip shots. Uh, 
They'll be all right if they can settle down here in the second half. And Story gets the free throw. One thing Vandy doesn't want, they don't want to see Tennessee run off a couple of quick buckets here. It's a six-point game. No 7 or 8 0 run here with a minute and 34 to go. Clement penetrates. Jolly a three. Up over the backboard out of bounds to Vanderbilt. She has not shot a ball all half. She had been waiting on that shot all half, and when she all half, and when she got it, and she was so anxious to put it in, a little bit too much off on the shot. Jolly really got off to a slow start shooting those threes, but suddenly she's gotten red hot and shooting 45% from three-point range, but she missed that one. Clock ticks down, close to a minute to go, first half. Big possession again, Vanderbilt. Ostendorf took an extra step. Ostendorf turns it over, and Tennessee gets it back. I think she has the possibility to be a fine basketball player. I think she's struggling a little bit coming back from an injury, but I think she'll be all right in the second half for Vandy. One minute to go. Now Jolly goes to the point, and Clement goes to the right wing. Randall doesn't shoot much from out there. Clement will shoot from there. No good this time. Smith had the rebound. Holstclaw had it rustled away from her. Washington on the baseline stepped out of bounds. Good hustle though by Vanderbilt. Now Pat Summit decides to call a 20-second timeout. It's, in, it's important at this point in the half for the for Vandy to take the last shot. Tennessee has this 44 seconds to go. There's 30 on the 30-second clock. Uh, it, whatever Tennessee does here, make or miss, uh, Vandy must take the last shot of the half. We have a chance to see some of the future stars of the pro game and the great stars of the SEC in Columbus, Georgia, at the Civic Center for the 1998 SEC Women's Basketball Tournament. It's February 26th through March 1st. Tickets are available by contacting your local SEC school's ticket office. Van will be there. I'm looking forward to it. One of the most exciting times of your life. I am really looking forward to it. I can go watch all the games without all, without all that pressure. That's right. 44 seconds to go. The shot clock's at 25. And so Tennessee's going to have to shoot it, and Holstclaw will right there. A hand in her face, just chopped up and drilled. Now Vanderbilt can hold it for the last shot. You don't want to go down by 10. You don't want to take a quick shot and have Tennessee score on you. Run it down to less than 10 seconds. Make sure you get the last shot and that Tennessee does not get a shot. Pass it low. Ostendorf hits. Well, that solves that problem. Score. He's coming in a hurry to Holstclaw. Holstclaw banks it up off the glass. No good. Randall trying to force it up, and Vanderbilt will hold it, and that's the half. Tennessee will go to the locker room, leading by six, but man, I think Vanderbilt's very happy where they are. Yes. I think Tennessee likes where they are from where they started, but Vandy's happy to be down six today. Pat Summit's number one Lady Falls leading Vanderbilt at halftime. 37-31 halftime activities from Knoxville coming up in just a moment. In the Thompson Bowling Arena right next to the stadium, you're watching SEC Women's Basketball on Fox Sports Net. I'm Bob Chesling along with Van Chancellor in Tennessee in front of 20,000 plus, leading Vanderbilt 37-31 at halftime as Tennessee seeks to go 7-0 in the Southeastern Conference this year, 21-0 overall. Pat Summit now in her 24th season at Tennessee, trying to win her sixth national championship. And we talked with Pat Summit earlier this week about her career and about this season and this Lady Vault team. Pat, I know when you took this job, you were hoping one day you could sell out the arena consistently and have these huge crowds, and it looks like it's here. Uh, it's, um, it's been an unbelievable season in terms of our fan support. And, you know, I, I will tell you, other than graduating players, influencing young women, and winning championships, it, there's nothing that compares other than walking in that arena and seeing the fans and, and just seeing the enthusiasm of our fans and how much they've supported and loved this basketball team. It's really it's been very touching and uh, very rewarding. But you're getting it on the road, too. I mean, you're drawing big crowds everywhere. Well, we are. I think, you know, I think the talk about this team has really generated a lot of interest, not only here in Knoxville, but nationwide. And that, 
that's fun because we'll go on the road. We go to Kentucky. We go to DePaul. There's a lot of orange there, and I think it's really motivated our team, and it's a great compliment to our basketball team and our basketball program. Has this pumped more life into your coaching career? I mean, do you see yourself going for years and years now? Well, I really don't, I don't know how long I'll do this. I will tell you, this has been a lot of fun. It's been fun because of the individuals I get to work with every day, the coaching staff that's tremendous, um, their commitment and dedication and loyalty is in place, and then you have a fun group, a group that plays hard. Not having the coach effort has uh, really allowed us to really teach and coach this team and enjoy this team. Of course, another aspect of women's basketball, the pro leagues, the ABL, the WNBA, can you ever foresee yourself coaching in that league? Well, I always think, you know, people out there say, don't, don't ever say that you would never do this, but Tennessee's my home, and, and uh, obviously that's where I, I really, I, my passion has been all along uh, at the University of Tennessee, and I don't think I could be offered a better job, and if uh, there's one out there, then someone needs to offer it, because I think I have the best job in America. But you also are motivated, and you accept challenges. Would you view that as a challenge? Well, I'm sure it'd be a challenge because it'd be a change in my life, and any time you go through a change, I think that that is a challenge. Uh, it's not one that really appeals to me right now. I think we're in a unique situation with a very special team and uh, a, a group of young athletes that uh, really have a chance to do something in this sport that hasn't been done, so why not uh, stick around and try and help them do it and enjoy it with them? One aspect, though, is now the Pro League will be looking for great players. You've got a lot of great players on this team. You pride yourself in the fact that they all graduate, but can you foresee the day when maybe one of them or two of them will leave early for the pro league? I can, Bob. I think it's a matter of when the numbers are, are uh, really more impressive and, and uh, resemble that of the men's game. I don't think for uh, this is for me personally, but money has has, has never been my motivation. It's um, you know it's a love of the game and and the love of what I do, but. I think uh, a, a million dollars is one thing, 15 million might be something different. Uh, then you might say this is about money. But I think right now um, we have players that are probably thinking about this in their mind and looking, looking at the money. But uh, I, don't, I, I hope that our players understand that they're enjoying some of the best years of, of their life at the collegiate level. And yet the professional opportunity will be wonderful for them at the right time. It's ultimately up to the student athlete. There'll be a lot of pressure on Shamika Holzkoll. A lot of players, people will be coming out of this year and say, you could turn pro after your junior season. What kind of advice will you give Shamika? Well, Shamika and I have talked about that, and I, I think Shamika was where she needs to be. I think she still has a chance not only to do some things individually and win some honors, but I think she has a chance to really develop her game and, and play with a team that's very special here at Tennessee and, and really grow, grow as a person as well as develop a, as a basketball player. I think she'll be worth more money if, if she stays in school. But uh, again, she knows that I'll support her in whatever she decides. Um, I, I think right now in, in her mind and in, in talking with the grandmother that, that they, they want that degree. Uh, they want to finish out and hopefully win four championships and go to that next level. And at the appropriate time, she'll make a huge impact on the professional league as, as well. Does life be much better for Pat Summit right now? Well, it's scary. You know, I've, I'm, um, you know, I've been so happy with this team and, and uh, really just uh, with my career and just finished writing a book, and, and that was the weight of, of the world off my shoulders at the end. But, um, you know, I've been very blessed in a lot of ways, and I'm, I'm very thankful uh, to be where I am and doing what I'm doing. And love what you're doing. I love it. I mean, everybody knows that. I mean, you can tell. I'm crazy and intense at times, but uh, that's just because I'm, I'm so involved in what I'm doing. Remarkable run for Tennessee's Pat Summit. Van, you look at uh, what, Van, what she's done here, and it is remarkable. Four stories in America. Uh, she's done it for so long, won with different types of players, and has won and been consistent and graduated her players. Five national championships. Pat Summit gunning for a sixth this season. Her Lady Balls lead at halftime against Vanderbilt. Looking Top ranked Tennessee, eighth ranked Vanderbilt getting set for second half action. Stats of the first half. Vanderbilt did their. Uh, Stayed right in there with Tennessee. Ran in a couple of key areas. Yes, uh, when you go back and th they out-rebounded Tennessee, which is very important. Uh, eight for ten from the free throw line. But the big two for Tennessee, Hoshloff and Ketchins, came through and did some wonderful things. Tennessee is holding its opposition to 37%. Vanderbilt in the first half. 
shot 47%. Yeah, when you look at this, beat scoring assists, field blocks, points in the paint, team fouls, they break even with Vandy. And I, I mean, with Tennessee, and I'm now talking about Vandy. That's why they score so close. Leading score in the game was Shanika Holstall with 16. Shanika catching with 13. No players for Vanderbilt in double figures. Set to go, second half. Vandy in the 2-3 zone. Matching up. Elsie had a walk to the cheater, puts it in. Penetration, passing the ball inside. That's called the Vanderbilt tough problem all game long. So Tennessee strikes first. Oster has the ball stripped from behind, and here comes Randall Hurry. Coach Foster cannot let this game get away from him to start the second half as Tennessee has changed presses. They've gone to a 1 2 2 1 full court zone press, putting a lot of pressure once the ball gets in bounds, dropping back and playing man. So Vanderbilt in the first half jumps out to a quick lead. Now in the second half, quickly they find themselves down by 10. Yes. And Vanderbilt, they, they have to make a decision. Oh, Hillman misses a layup. Ostrom misses the putback. Now Hillman battling, and she's going to be called for a push-off. I was trying to say, I thought before, if they made the layup, forget the timeout. If the score goes, goes down, if they go down much more, they must think about a timeout, and they are taking a 20 at this time, it looks like. There it is right there, Jim Foster letting his troops know what's going on. I don't think he's too happy right now, sports fans. I think he's saying, why did we have to come out and play? The very beginning, don't let them press us. All Tennessee is doing to them at this time is jumping out, pressing early, and, and, uh, and then dropping back. So what was scores from yesterday? LSU surprises Florida. Great game for Sue Garner. Yep. Uh, I know that's very pleasing. Andy Landers beats Ole Miss. And, and Coach Landers feels like this. Any game on the road in the SEC is a great win. Ole Miss is playing hard with a lot of young players. Minute in, second half. It's been all Tennessee so far as they build up a 10-point lead. Keep possession if you're handy. Right now for Tennessee, good question open here. Oh, Paul, that's six unanswered points for Tennessee to start the second half. Respondek runs it down. She's been quiet since getting a couple of buckets early in the game. She, she's having trouble getting her shot off. Hillman misses another layup inside, and the ball out of bounds this time off. Tennessee is cheater knocked it up. When Coach Foster and his team looks at this tape, they are going to count numerous blown inside opportunities. They need to stop the bleeding right yes. now real quick. And they hurry. Ostrom, boy, almost stepped out of bounds. Tight rope there a bit. Tennessee man's out of bounds. Most teams do not put that much pressure on. Sometimes you have trouble getting it in. Open look. Nothing. Elsie knocks it out. Respondent missed out top. And Tennessee knocks it away. So Vandy gets a fresh 30. When, you, when you're the, in Vandy's situation, you've got two layups and an outside wide open three. That's all you can do. You have to knock some of those shots down. But Tennessee, give them credit. They've come out in the second half, and I think Pets had a little talk with them and said and got their attention. They're playing much more aggressive on the defensive end. Give and go. Ostrom. Down low, Randall. Up and under. Short on. That's one of the hardest things to teach a player. Ostrom makes a move. Randall does not foul her. Do not foul someone when they put themselves in a bad position. By not fouling, she then gets the rebound, and Tennessee gets possession. Vanderbilt has missed its first five shots, second half. And that's not a good omen against the number one team in the country. A team that's suddenly shooting 56% from the field now, as Tennessee is. That's going to go up. Oh, Hosman missed it. Elsie puts it in. So many athletes for Tennessee can rebound, shoot, put it back in. Eight-nothing run for Tennessee to start second half. I've never seen Tennessee use so many full court different pressure defenses. Man, zone press, diamond press, one, two, one, one. Another steal. Elsie ahead of the pack. Nothing going right for Vandy. And Tennessee's putting up the pressure. And they have turned the heat up defensively. That's the difference in this game. Got a foul. Double team in backcourt. Respondent gets it well as poised as Vanderbilt was 
in the first half. They looked equally rattled here in the second. But by the same token, give Tennessee credit for that. They came out, they put a player out of bounds on the ball. They started pressuring every passing lane, putting somebody deep where Vandy could not go deep. And, and they've just turned up the defensive pressure. They are cutting the nine everywhere. Smith, pass inside, banged around, held and missed everything. And now a foul as Ostrom pushes off. And when you put that much pressure on another team, that also forces that team to miss easy shots such as Vandy is doing at this time. Check that. The foul out on Ostrom was on 22 responding. She suddenly has three personal fouls. I don't care what you do on defense if you're Vandy. You now have to score to keep the bleeding from stopping. in, lost it, still loose, Jolly picks it up. Cole's claw. She's missed two in a row, that's news, but Elsie puts it in again. Now a list of the ball knocked away. Van, a minute ago, it was a six-point game, and just like that, it's 18. That's what makes Tennessee so explosive this year. They were down 18 points or so against Illinois yep. and came back and played so tough. They made a lineup change. They, they brought in their quicker team with Randall to start the second half, and they are putting pressure on everywhere. Remember, there's no 10-second count in women's basketball, so you've got all the time you want to bring it up. Responding. That won't go. Vanderbilt now has gone five to four minutes. Well, out of point, second half. Tennessee's playing extremely well. Dandy cannot make a shot, and this makes it tough from a, an emotional point of view. The timeout comes at a good time for Dandy. Pat Summit likes to keep playing. Her team on a roll, now up by 18 against the Commodores. It was 37-31 at halftime. It's been all Tennessee second half. A 12-0 run for Vanderbilt. Tough stretch of games for the Commodores. They lost at South Carolina. Then they won an overtime at Arkansas on January 18th. And now here at Tennessee today. They'll next give a couple of games will be at home against South Carolina and Florida. Well, that's tough going to South Carolina, Arkansas. They're winding up a road trip in Tennessee. But if you're Coach Summit, you could always have an attention getter. Catching gets 13 points in the first half. Undoubtedly, she didn't guard somebody in the, in the first half. Now she gets to set to start this half. Vandy works it around quickly with the shot. Way short by a respondent. And it's taken away by Hillman. Just looks a little shell shot here, and there's an elbow by Respondek for fourth foul. Offensive foul. Kinsey, nice call. If you're going to do it, you don't do it right in front of yeah, the official. Oh, yeah. We got three of the great officials in this country. Nan says, Ken Sheffy, and Gene Carto. The illustrious and the famous Gene Carto. There you go. I got to say that because she coaches and she rails in the WNBA also. You're always working, aren't you? Oh, you're always working. You, you got to work. Yeah. Yeah, with her, that wouldn't do you any good, I promise you. Yeah. And you'll send her the tape, too, on the <laughs> make sure she hears you. <laughs> Kelly Jolly. Skip pass. Randall. Motors in and puts it off the glass. Summit saw her as a freshman at Trinity, and she made the decision right then and there. She wanted her as a freshman in high school. As good as she looked, I can understand why. She's probably up scouting Hillman and saw Randall. The way they recruit here at Tennessee, you don't ever know. They go after every great player in the country and have a shot at them. <laughs> Nothing going right for Vanderbilt right now. And another turnover. Point, a key adjustment that the Tennessee staff has made. They put LZ, who is bigger than Christy Smith, on her out of bounds. She cannot see the photo ball long at this time. Vanderbilt trying to regroup. Ashley Smith inside slaps the ball away from Randall. And now a jump ball is called as Redmond tried to get it out of there. Couldn't do it. The alternate possession gives the ball back to Vanderbilt. When you put a player 5 foot 9 or a player 5 foot 5 out of bounds, then, then when Vandy runs a player long, uh, Smith cannot see there. This is kind of Tennessee's in their sick of mode right here. They're uh, just getting after them. You know what I've said about them? The thing that they've done, they, yeah, they're athletic, they're good, but every time they come to the gym, they're in a hostile mood. And they still can't get it to go. They've got over five minutes now without a point second half. And they're point blank inside shots at three feet out. Most gets fouled inside and will go to the line. 
it's tough enough when you don't score five minutes against a bad team when you don't do it against the number one team in the country you got big problems now, when you play the number one team in the country that's averaging 90 points 101 points in their last game 99 possessions per game and you don't score early and you can't kick it in it's tough there's the juggernaut pat summit is assembled here they're averaging 90 points a game giving up 58 a couple of key stats though van they are forcing 27 turnovers per game and after that they're stealing the ball 15 times a game yeah, I, i've said this uh, if, if you're going to beat tennessee you better bring a stack lunch because it's going to take all day because they can do it all i mean th they score they spill the ball when you have 99 possessions a game you just have so many opportunities to convert those into points and when you're shooting over 50 percent from the field and some of the players now shooting 60 percent like whole squad sec play you're gonna lot of layups and, yeah, in this league that's very difficult to do most players go down in percentage and stats when they, when they get to sec play because this league is so tough 19 for whole squad Interesting though, she doesn't have a rebound today. Second toss, good by Holstaw. She's really put an emphasis on her defense and no rebounds to show today. But the 20 points to lead all scores. And now the lead is 22. Bob, you griping about her not having any rebounds would be like if you were married to Anna White and would be griping because she couldn't cook. That's exactly right. Here's a woman shooting about 75%, got 23 points, 21 points. Well, their ship is sinking right now, quickly. And, and if you're Coach Foster, it's very difficult. You call two timeouts, you don't know what to do. I've been in this position here before. Redman drives through, hits the bottom of the rim. Look at the pass out to Elsie, ahead of the back, drops it off to Randolph. These foul won't go down, she'll go to the line. The mark of a great team is a team that is unselfish. Post law, pass the ball wild to Elsie. She could have shot the ball. Here it is. Bob, look at this play right here. Just pass it off instead of shooting the basketball. Giving a teammate an opportunity to score. When you care more about your team than you do about yourself, your team has a shot to win. Right now, it's like trying to put out a forest fire with a bucket of water, isn't it? Now it's like putting out a forest fire with a bucket of gasoline. Everything is going the Lady Ball's way at this time. Vanderbilt has to take a timeout to talk about things. It'll be a full timeout. It comes with 13.54 to go. Vanderbilt shoots blanks, and the Lady Ball's hit bullseyes. 56-31, second half in Knoxville. A game that these young players from Tennessee are having at this time. Tennessee does not have a post player on the floor. Randall knocks it home. There's Helmet on the bench. Tough day for her. She has seven points. When you're a competitor and things are going like this game is right now for Vanderbilt, tough to watch. Now a recent foul on Shelby for host ball. Tennessee's playing three guards, two small forwards. I guess you could play there just playing five players that are getting at you. Tennessee has really done a nice job of interchanging players. Holstwell actually is, although she's, most of her career has played the three spot, she's actually played a lot more four this year. Vanderbilt breaks the press, Ostendorf in and finally scores. First basket comes at the 13-33 mark. And at that, that time you think you're never going to score. Holstwell, the alley -oop. Fifty-nine, thirty-three. Remember, these teams will meet later in the season in Nashville, which is a very difficult place for any team to play. Coaches on the end lines, and it's a tough place to adjust. They'll have a pack house. Austin Dorf misses. Janky battling. Tie. Jump ball. That'll be out of bounds to Vanderbilt. And now Ace Clement comes in. And Tennessee subs, and you know, they tell a better difference in the team as they continue to play. And that it's Pat Summit has also commented, this has been a very unselfish team. Every player knows their role, knows some games are going to get more minutes if they practice hard. Yes, and, and they tell me that they have been a minute's trouble on this basketball team, and that is amazing when you think about how many big-time stars they have. 
Earlier last year, Tennessee on their national championship team had Tiffany Johnson, who was the big center, would have been a huge post player for him inside. She was kicked off the team for violating team rules, and uh, Tennessee had missed a beat. If, if you're if, at Tennessee, you don't conform to the Lady Bob way, you'll soon be packing, and I, and I, I think that's the way it should be. And they just had, they just kept right on playing. Matt Summit graduates all her players. Everyone that's played four years has got a degree here at Tennessee. In 24 years, that's saying something. Randall forces it up. Post clock gets fouled going up. They are fighting the offensive boards. Tennessee has played seven and a half minutes of outstanding basketball, to which if you play at this rate, they're one of the top teams in the country, if not the top team, and they're number one for a reason. Post-Kalana's season averaging 21 points a game. In SEC play, though, she's averaging 25, and she's also shooting 63% from the field. And here's what amazes me about her. She comes to play every game, whether it's DePaul or Vandy, whether it's whoever it is, and that's a major difference. That's very hard for a player to do sometimes. Pulse Claw hits again. She's got 24. You're watching SEC Women's Basketball on Fox Sports Net. Bob Chesley along with Van Chancellor, number one Tennessee against number eight Vanderbilt. This has been all Tennessee in the second half. This was a six-point game at halftime, and Tennessee steamrolled in the second half. And Vandy's just had so much difficulty converting their shots. They've gotten pretty good shots. They've gotten shots that would keep them in the basketball game. They just not have... They've just... Freak Moody and the Alabama team. You cannot let all of these people play. And the crowd, you've got to take them out of the game. You've got to take and not let anything bother you. Refereeing, my coaching, so to speak. <laughs> yep. I, that's what I used to tell my sure. teams when we came to. Don't let anything bother you. Play basketball. Let's play Alabama basketball. 